Good morning, great people, and welcome to Morning Manor, where we not only teach, but we also touch the hearts for the saving of the soul in Christ Jesus. If it's your first time here with us, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad you could join us this morning. I hope you find your time well spent. If you are a regular member, God bless you for always coming out and showing your support. Indeed, it is a blessing and a privilege to have you here with us. Don't forget, if you have not yet subscribed to YouTube channel, to make sure that you go ahead and do so right now. And also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you always be notified whenever we are doing something here in the house of God, because God is doing some amazing stuff. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, great people. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just go ahead and type your name in the chat and type, I am great. I am great. I am great. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Good morning, Sister Jennifer. Good morning, Sister Corla. Amen. Good morning, Sister Winnet. Amen. Good morning, Sister uh, Damaris. Good morning, Deaconess Ingrid. Good morning, Sister Patrika. Amen. Good morning, Sister Natasha. I amen. Brother Amari. Good morning, little man. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Beverly. Good morning, Sister Bulin. Good morning, good morning, good morning, amen. Good morning, Sister Mundle. Just type your name in the chat and type, I am great, I am great, I am great. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Camille out of England. Good morning to the rest of you in England as well. Good morning to Brother Twain in Jamaica and everyone else in Jamaica as well. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to Sudbury as well, amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to those of you who are tuning in from the rest Amen of areas in the world. Good morning, good morning, good morning to those of you who will be tuning in later on or sometime in life. God bless you. Just type your name in the chat and type, I am great, I am great, I am great. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen. God is truly amazing. We bless the Lord this morning. Amen, amen. God is truly amazing. Good morning, Sister Tamara. Amen. Wonderful. Amen, amen. God is truly amazing. Amen. We bless the Lord this morning. We lift him up and we worship him. Amen. God bless you. Just type your name in the chat and type, I am great. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. God is truly amazing. Anyways, let us break bread this morning into a word. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Vernica. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Amen. God is truly amazing. Turn your Bibles with me this morning to the book of Genesis chapter 4. Amen. Genesis chapter 4. Amen. Good morning, uh, Dr. Good morning, Dr. Clark. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me this morning to the book of Genesis uh, chapter 4. Reading from, we're going to be reading from verse 3 to verse 8. Amen. Good morning, Sister Susan. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Genesis chapter 4. Amen. Reading from verse 3 to verse 8. Amen. Wonderful. And this is a story that I think, you know, we know very well. Amen. If not in full, but in short. Amen. We know this story very well. Amen. Because we have been learning about this story ever since, you know, Sunday school or Bible school, whatever it is. You know, this is a very simple story. And it's about the st and it's the story about the two first brothers. Amen. Amen. But anyways, let us read. Hallelujah. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first lens of his flock and of the fat, the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel on his offering and unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall not thou be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin light at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and unto thou shall rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass that when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew 
him. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. And as I always tell you, you know, for more details or to get a better understanding of the story, it is better for you to read the entire chapter. Amen. Wonderful. But this is very simple. It's, you know, basically telling us about, you know, the time when Cain and Abel offered up a sacrifice unto the Lord and God accepted Abel's offering over Cain's offering. Amen. And Cain was very angry. And as a result, amen, of his brother being accepted and he was not, amen, he was angry against his brother and he ended up killing him. Amen. And we're going to be digging deep into this story this morning because we're coming from a very important topic that I think it's important to each and every one of us. Amen. My topic to you this morning is how to be happy for others. Amen. How to be happy for others. Let us pray. Father, we glorify you this morning. As we come into your presence, mighty God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We're thankful unto you and we're blessing your name, mighty God, because we understand that you're good, Father, and your mercies endure it forever. Father, take full control now. Bless us this morning, O oh Father, with your words of wisdom and power, that, Father, we, mighty God, will gain a greater level of understanding, that, Father, we'll let go of the old ideas that we have been carrying around, so that, mighty God, you can bless us and take us to a higher level. Take full control now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wonderful. Hallelujah. How to be happy for others. Good morning, Sister Sonia. Amen. How to be happy for others. Amen. And again, taken to us from the book of Genesis 4, from 3 to 8. Amen. Wonderful. Now, I think this, you know, this topic is very, very important. Amen. And I know I always say that about everything that I teach you, but this one, I think, is one of the top ones. Amen. It's one of the top ones because I believe that this is something that we should not just allow people to figure out on their own. Amen. This is not something that we should allow people to figure out on their own. Amen. Because if they do, it might just become a complete disaster. Amen. But I believe that this is something that should be taught. Amen. This is something that should be taught just like prayer. Amen. You know, prayer is something that, that, that can be taught and should be taught. Amen. And so I also believe that this is one of those important things that should be taught. Amen. And the reason why I think that this should be taught is because in the world that we are living in, in the world that we are living in, it is a very competitive world. Amen. It is a very competitive world. And because it is so competitive, we have been taught how to focus on ourselves. Amen. We have been taught, we have been taught how to focus on ourselves. Amen. Because competition says me first. Amen. And everyone else after. Amen. It's all about me winning. It's all about me, you know, putting myself first, amen, and everyone else after me, amen, are the losers, amen. And so we're focusing so much on ourselves. <coughs> Sorry. We're focusing so much on ourselves. And in the process of that, we forget about the significance and the feelings of others, amen. But now when we're in Christ, it's not about the competition, but it's about the cooperation. Amen. And Christ said, if any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and a servant to all. Amen. Which means that now the mindset of the world and the mindset of Christ is completely different. Amen. Because in the world, it's all about you. But in Christ, it's all about you putting others first. Amen. 
and that is how you win in him. And so I understand that as a result of the world's mindset, amen, and the world's standard of being first, amen, it really causes us to do whatever it takes to see others fail, amen. And sometimes the funny thing is that we believe that, you know, when others fail, then it means that automatically we can become successful. Our happiness is based on other people's failure at times. And this should not be so. Amen. And so as a result, if we see others are uplifted, if we see others who are blessed, we find it very hard to be happy for them. Amen. We find it so hard to be happy for them. Amen. If they tell you about the success that they have accomplished, amen. If they tell you about, you know, all of the blessings that they have received, then as soon as you hear that, sometimes the first thing that comes to mind is not really to celebrate them. But the first thing that comes to mind is like, you don't deserve that. Amen. Or I wish you had failed. Amen. Or I wish that didn't happen. Or how did this happen? Amen. The first thing that automatically comes to mind is a negative idea against that person. Amen. Or you probably think that the success that that individual have accomplished is not worthy of being appreciated or celebrated in any way because you're like, what is that? That's nothing. I accomplished way more than that. Amen. And as much as you can, you drain away the joy of their victory. Amen. But this morning, I want you to understand that you need to learn how to celebrate the success of others. Amen. It's very important. Amen. And I know that sometimes, you know, you're in the process where you have been waiting on the Lord for so long, or you have been fighting so hard to become successful. Amen. But yet still, you know, after so long, you're not seeing any kind of result. Amen. You're not seeing any kind of breakthrough. You're not seeing any doors being opened. Amen. And you're seeing people coming after you and they're promoted before you. And you're seeing others coming after you. And it seems as if, you know, life is so easy for them. Amen. And sometimes you got to look at, you know, the reason why you're being set back at times. Because many times, the decision that you have made, they haven't made that decision. Amen. And so sometimes because of what they're working with, it makes it easier for them to move forward and get to the end before you. Amen. And you got to understand that you are who you are and you are where you are. And that's a fact. And you got to learn how to work your way from there. It doesn't matter your circumstances. It doesn't matter the situation that surrounds you. You can still be victorious. Sometimes it will be more difficult, but you just got to make the decision to work with what you have. Amen. And so you got to understand now that these are all contributors to contributors at times to when and how we have victory. Amen. And so if others are having their victory, are they succeeding? You got to learn how to celebrate them. Amen. Learn how to celebrate them. And I think that this is very, very important. Amen. Because the Bible says that by this you will know that you're mine if you love one another. Amen. If you love your brothers and your sisters, you will celebrate them. Amen. You will be happy for their success. You will be happy for their victory. Amen. You will make sure that you make them realize how important what they have done is. Amen. Don't try to take away the joy of that moment from them by telling them about your success and about what you are doing and about how big your life is and about how big your dream is and about how big the idea is that you have in mind. No, no. Take the time out to celebrate them within that time. Amen. And you need to understand now that success and failures are great revealers. Amen. Success and failures 
are great revealers. Amen. Because you need to understand that just as how you don't know your true friends until you are in a defeated position, you also won't know your true enemies until when success comes. <coughs> Sorry. You won't know it until when success comes. Amen. A lot of times, you know, you'll be hanging around people in life and you think that they're really with you and they're for you and they encourage you so much. Amen. And they appreciate you so much. Amen. And they will laugh and they will talk with you and everything is good. But may the day come and you become successful in a certain area. Amen. Probably you never had a car before and they're always driving you around. Amen. And bringing you to different places and so on. Amen. And, and, and all of a sudden now you decided to buy a car that is better than theirs. Then all of a sudden, all hell break loose. Amen. Or make it be that, you know, you don't have a house or, you know, you don't have a degree or anything. And you decided to go forward and you become successful. All of a sudden, those friends quickly become your enemies. Amen. And all of a sudden, you're wondering what's going on. What did you do wrong? They don't talk to you no more. They don't call you no more. They block you out of the WhatsApp group. Amen. They're hanging out without you now. And they have new friends and all kind of stuff. Amen. And you're wondering, what did you do wrong? And sometimes these are the reasons why most people don't strive to become successful. Why? Because they fear losing the friends that they have. They believe that if they become successful, then those people that they have as their friends will no longer be their friends. And so as a result, what they do is that they suppress themselves. Amen. They suppress themselves. And so when they could go forward and go higher, they just cut back and they just, you know, belittle themselves because they don't want to become successful because they fear that they might lose those friends that they now have. Amen. You see, success will reveal many, many enemies who you think are your friends. You see, it's just like, you know, you're in the dark. It's just like when you're in the dark. You cannot see your shadow in the dark. But as soon as the light turns on, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you can see the shadows that surrounds you. And you can see who has a shadow and your own shadow. Amen. Shadows are not seen in the darkness. They're only revealed in the light. Amen. And so a lot of people, they fail to move forward. They don't want to work as hard because they fear losing certain friends around them. But I want you to understand that if you becoming successful will determine on you keeping friends, then those people were never meant for you in the first place. Amen. If you cannot become successful because you will lose certain friends, then those people don't deserve to have you around them. Those people are only using you so that they can shine brighter. Amen. But how about you? You have needs. You have desires. You have goals. You have aspiration. You have a purpose. Amen. <coughs> Sorry. And so you determine to be successful as well. And so forget about those who cannot handle your success. Amen. Forget about those who cannot manage you shining bright. Amen. Forget about those who cannot manage you being in the spotlight. Amen. Don't belittle yourself no more just because you want people to accept you. No, no. Keep going. Keep pushing. Keep becoming all that God as placed on the inside of you. Bring it out. Amen. So that you can live a better life. Amen. A more purposeful lifestyle. It is very, very important. Amen. And a lot of leaders at times, they oftentimes don't share certain stuff with other people. Amen. They don't share certain stuff with other people. Why? Because they fear that those followers might someday overtake them. And they want to be in the position of leadership always. Amen. And so they don't want to share the ideas and the strategies and the methods that they use to get to the level where they are because they want to keep those people 
under them and as followers always. But as children of God, you cannot be like that. Amen. You cannot hold on others because you want to stay on top. Amen. You cannot fight down others because you want to be in that leadership position. You see, you destroying others don't automatically mean that you'll be promoted. It doesn't work like that. At some time, the person who is following should be properly trained to be leaders. When you are gone, the purpose should not die with you. Amen. But those people who are following you should be properly empowered to lead as well. Amen. So you got to learn how to celebrate others. It doesn't matter how small the victory is. Take time out to really, really celebrate it. Amen. To let them understand how appreciated they are. Amen. And how much they have done and how wonderful what they have done is. Take the time out. Applaud them. Amen. If you can buy them lunch for that day, buy them lunch. Amen. If you can buy them some for that day, buy it for them. Amen. So that they can feel appreciated. Amen. Because the funny thing about life is that you never know what people are going through. And you never know what it took them to get to the level that they are. Amen. You never know the fight that they have to go through. You never know the amount of sleepless nights. You never know the sacrifice that they had to make in order to get where they are. Amen. Sometimes it's so, so difficult. Amen. <coughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes it's so difficult. Amen. I love the way, you know, oftentimes you put, people put it. They said, you know, everybody see the glory but nobody knows my story. Amen. Something along that line. Amen. Everybody sees the glory, but nobody knows the story, right? Because, you know, at the time when they're seeing you shining, it tend to be so easy and it tend to be so much of a blessing. And a lot of people might think that you don't deserve it. They might think that you don't deserve the blessings that you are receiving. Amen. But if they only know, what it took to be you. Amen. If they only knew what it took you to get to where you are, amen, they would have celebrated with you. They would have laughed with you. They would have cheered you on. Amen. Because they don't understand the many times when you um, thought about quitting. They don't understand the many times when you almost, you know, let go and throw in the towel and say that this was too difficult and this was too hard and you had to cry out to God and pray and pray and pray and fast and do whatever it takes. Amen. And so you need to celebrate others. Don't just get up and become, you know, envious of others for what they have. Amen. And you talk about them and begin to spread all kind of rumors on them just because you don't like the fact that they are successful. But as children of God, we need to change this. We need to change this. We cannot continue with this mindset. Amen. And this is something that the church needs to continue to echo out so loud so that the believers, the body of Christ, will get it. Because you'd be surprised to know the amount of people in Christ or in the, or in the church who are envious. Amen. Or, or, or most people put it as being bad mind. Amen. A lot of people are. Amen. And yes, they might jump up and clap and shout, but deep within, amen, deep within, they're not really happy for you. They're not really happy for you deep within, amen. And you need to understand that we have a God, amen, who does not look at things from the outward appearance, but he look at things from the inner man, amen. He looks at the heart, amen. I put it this way that, you know, while his hands may be on someone else, his eyes is on you. Amen. He's looking at your heart while his hands is blessing someone else. And so the way you appreciate them, the way you, you know, celebrate them, the way that you applaud them, God sees all of that. Amen. <coughs> Sorry. God sees all of that. And based on your reaction at times, it can slow down or speed up your blessing. Amen. 
Sometimes it's because of how you react to others why the time of your blessing takes so long. Amen. Or comes so fast. Amen. If you don't have a heart for others, then I guarantee you, then the heart you have is not one that is ready to receive the blessings of God. Amen. You got to learn how to be happy for other success. And sometimes, to be honest with you, you know, you're really in the position of difficulty. And it doesn't seem as if, you know, nothing is going right for you. And it's very hard. I know it's very hard to be where you are. But at the same time, you need to understand that when others are being blessed, that is a time for you to really celebrate and appreciate them. Give God thanks. Amen. Because that should be an example unto you to understand that you are closer than you could ever imagine. Because success really needs example. Success really needs example. And so when you have somebody who is being blessed or who is, you know, being promoted to a higher level, you need to be happy because now you have somebody who you can probably ask to lead you or to help you to get to their level. Amen. Don't just see it, you know, as something that you should, you know, be angry about or, you know, you should hate the person because of this. That's what the Bible says. You know, when, when, when Jacob loved Joseph more than all the other, his other brothers, they didn't like him because of that. And furthermore, when he got the dream, they worse didn't like him. Amen. They hated him even more. Amen. And they hated him so much to the point where they wanted to kill him. Amen. And so we got to make sure that that doesn't step into our church. Amen. And that's why at times so much chaos is in the body of Christ. So much chaos is in the body of Christ because people are being blessed and other people don't like it. But tomorrow we're going to pick up from here because we got to get rid of this mindset. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we bless you this morning. We, ex we exalt you and we glorify you. Lord God, I pray, Father, that you give us the mind to celebrate others, to understand, oh, Father, that everyone deserves to be successful. Mighty God, take full control now as we bless you and exalt you. Lord Jesus, I pray now that you lead us and direct us every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you all for joining us. If you love what you have heard, give us a thumbs up and also make sure to pass this message around to someone else who you think might need it more than yourself. Amen. And also now, don't forget, don't forget, if you have not yet subscribed, to go ahead and subscribe to YouTube channel. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. And remember now that everyone deserves to be successful. Learn how to celebrate others as much as you'd want to be celebrated. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Same place, same time. God bless you.